Greetings, hola, my beautiful people at Cozy Cottage here. Queen V, your host. How's everyone? You don't have to say it. <laughs> I know it's been a while. I am so glad to be on here with you guys just to shoot the breeze. That's all I'm doing today. Shoot the breeze with you guys. Do a little chit chat. And I, I just decided to do a little reading. It's been about five months since I read to you guys. Five months, yes. Yes, it has been about five months. So I figure I start off where I left off five months ago. But I just wanted to um, chit chat with you for a few minutes before I start reading the book that I was reading with you guys five months ago called Little Woman. Um, but yes, uh, you seen my earlier video. If you haven't, go by and check it out. It's only about a minute or so. I was on my way to work this morning just to say I love you guys. That's all. I just got on just to say I love you and say a few encouraging words before I got to work. And now I'm home, and I just didn't feel like doing anything, as I always do, coming home, doing other work, which that seems to be my life. Work, 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 work. Get off work, come home, do church work, or come home, do personal work. And uh, it's, it's, it's like, okay, um, today I'm chilling. I'm chilling today. Uh, I actually had talked to my sister earlier today and I said I think I'm gonna go home and watch a movie and I want to watch the movie Genius Aretha um, um, a story on um, Aretha Franklin and which is two um, two great wonderful singers that um, portrayed her in these movies the first one that came out was um, by Cynthia Erbo, E R I V O. Cynthia Erbo, awesome singer. She's also an actress, and um, she's very known well from her um, roles and plays that she um, played in the Color Purple on stage. And the girl has a voice; just she's blessed. God just blessed her with the voice. Is she has a beautiful voice, but she um, um, she portrayed Aretha Franklin in the movie um, it's called uh, Genius Aretha, and um, National Geographic um, did the showing of this movie. I don't know if you guys seen that one, but if you haven't, go uh, um, check it out. I think it's. Um, streaming on Hulu and Vudu now. Um, you might even want to check check National Geographic out. It still may be uh, showing on that, and you know. But it's been it's been some months now since it showed, and I actually now have it on DVD. I have it in my own personal collection, and um, I said I'm gonna watch that tonight. Um, I thought I'd be watching it already, but I end up getting home and seasoning some turkey necks and some turkey legs, which I'm not going to cook the turkey legs until tomorrow. I did actually put the turkey necks in the oven and, um, you know, and I got something to eat. So I ended up doing some other little things like that. And I didn't pop in the movie because I like to be sitting back chilling. So now that I'm kind of sitting back chilling, I was like, Hmm, let me um, get on the video and talk to my beautiful people out there. It's been a while and just reading them a couple of chapters of Little Woman. And then I watched the movie, you know, because it's the weekend. It's Friday. Y'all know how I love my Fridays. It is Friday, so... Um, I have a weekends off, so um, I normally go back kind of late on Fridays. So 
I'm gonna watch a movie after um, I read this little bit of the book to you guys and chit chat with y'all and then I'm gonna watch the movie and um, I might just end up watching part of it because it's a little that movie is, is like a little series but it is so good. Now, some of you may have seen the movie Aretha by Jennifer Hudson, another wonderful singer that's very gifted by God with that beautiful voice of hers. And she did a wonderful job too. She did a wonderful job. But me personally, I love both of them, but my favorite is the one done by Cynthia so if you haven't seen it check that one out okay also check out the other one with Jennifer Hudson if you haven't seen that one um, I I like the Aretha Franklin but I guess I put it this way I wasn't I guess a big big fan of hers because I guess I listened to some of her music and, and the woman has a wonderful voice and I kind of like never understood why they called her the Queen of Soul. And I guess if I kind of got more into her and checked out more of her music and, and just some of her history, then I would understand. But after I seen the movie Aretha, done by Cynthia Irvo, and I even seen the one with Jennifer Hudson, I had more respect for Aretha Franklin because the movie is, is based on her life story and some of um, things that has happened in her life, things that she's been through to get where she ended up being um, before she passed away. Um, and then listen to some of the music that I never knew she sang. Man, I'm like, okay, now. I see why she was called the Queen of Soul. Yeah. Because the woman, mm, the woman has a, such an awesome, gifted voice. And really, truly, she could have just stayed with the gospel instead of going secular. Because the gift was there. The gift was there. I mean, God gave her that gift to sing praises unto him, not to go secular. But, of course, many of them do. And she went secular, and she did She did fine, you know, with it. Um, but she always kept that gospel in her because that that's what was put in her by God. And she went through a lot, and I... I grown to have more respect of who she was and why they call her the Queen of Soul. Yeah, yeah, she definitely was. <laughs> so, but anyway, I didn't mean to get into all that, but that just happened to come up because that's what I plan to do, watch that movie. So I probably watch some of it because it's a little serious series and I'm going to watch the rest tomorrow. Um, I did, it depends on how I feel once I finish reading to you guys. But anyway, I just, I just want to get on and shoot the breeze with you guys and see how you all are doing. How's everyone doing? What are you doing in your life right now? And, and, um, you know, to, to make your life better, you know, um, what are you going through in your life that, you know, you just may want to talk about, um, may want to get through, um, you know, you can comment in this, in down below, you know, in the comments, you know, just, you know, you don't have to talk about what you're going through, but just talk about what you may want to be doing in life to better your life, you know, whatever, you know, because I'm working on it. Um, um, it's weird because it seems like every time I get back doing what I was telling you guys that I'm doing, and I'm putting in hours and putting in class hours and stuff, bam, something else happened. Um, and in these classes that I'm taking, I have to be focused. I you know my mind can't be all over the place or, you know, I have to be focused on that. And, um, cause I have to put in those hours and, 
in order to finish what I'm doing. But I have to be focused. So some of the things that's been kind of like a stumbling block, you know, it's like, you know, things that's been happening that's been slowing me down. But I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm not going to let, I'm not giving up on myself. Okay? Not giving up on myself. I'm going to keep going. But um, I did want to say is um, I just had another death in my life. A very close, close, close friend of mine, like a best friend of mine. Um, he's a he was one of the brothers in my church, but he was from the Portland, Oregon area. But we got to know each other very well and became very good friends, brothers and sister in Christ, but also good friends. You know, if I need someone to talk to, he was there. If he needs someone to talk to me, I was always there. You know, we even had plans to do certain stuff in our life that, um, that was going to better our life. And we was going to come together, put our both geniuses together, you know, things I wanted to do in life and things that he was already doing in his life. We will put those two together and, um, you know, make things happen, you know, and, you know, that we both be doing something we love doing together. And it was just so much the more with him. Um, he was a good hearted person. We do anything for you. Um, give you his last penny, okay? Um, you know, so many people have tried to get over him and use him, but, you know, he's so forgiving. And, you know, me, I, you know, I'm I'm the type, yes, uh, we forgive, I forgive you, but you ain't going to keep getting over on me. You ain't going to keep using me, you know, and... You know, and I was always that type on them, like, look, you know, you got to stop letting them get over on you like that. And, you know, let, let me talk to them. Let me step in the, in, in, in the way. Let me step in the mix of this because I just hate it when, you know, people use them because he was a good hearted person, sometimes naive, you know, but very intelligent, very intelligent young man, you know, and, he was very bright, um, all about, you know, eating good and all about herbs and, and, and living a good life and everything. And, and he, he uh, per se preached this to people like, you know, doing things to, you know, make, you know, their lives better for us, the half wise and eating good. And, you know, it's just so much. Um, intelligence that he he had you know he was actually a builder he was a contractor and he was like perfection you know everything had to be perfect down to the measurements and everything and I watched him build you know um, shops and and homes I, I it's he did awesome work you know and um, he was over in the Portland, Oregon area, um, but then he came over on this, on the East Coast, um, and because of our headquarters that we had purchased, very, very, very um, large um, temple, and not only thing, it had schools, gyms, and everything, I mean, it's a huge campus, basically, but it needed a lot of renovation. So he came over and became part of it to help, you know, along with, you know, a lot of other uh, contractors and everything that's help, you know, help renovating um, the temple as it is now. They're still doing it. Uh, but my friend, he took sick. He became sick. Um, 
things was happening in his body that he said he didn't understand and I begged him to go to see the doctor and this one thing about him very intelligent very intelligent even know much about your party body parts and everything he used to work in the hospital he worked in many other places and he's had very a lot of knowledge in so many areas of life you know but he's he's his uh, gift was building, you know. He was awesome in it. But he didn't like going to the doctors. He didn't trust them. He didn't like hospitals. He didn't like none of that. And when he wasn't feeling good or something, he felt like something ain't right, he would not go to the hospital, to the doctor. He would try to doctor himself, and I would beg him, please, go at least find out what's going on. How can you doctor yourself? How can you take this and that, and you don't know what it is? And because it, something you could be taking could be making things worse. Instead of finding out what it is, at least just go, even if you don't allow the doctor, even if they want to prescribe you something, whatever. Get Take the prescription, whatever. You don't have to get it. But then you can take it with herbs or whatever to counteract whatever the problem may be. I don't know. Just go. Because it could be something very serious that you may need medical attention along with um, the holistic side of it, you know. But he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. And he wouldn't tell me he had been battling with it for a long time, stuff that had been going on in his body. But he finally started talking to me because I believe he was getting scared of, of what was going on. But he still would not go to the doctor. Oh, made me so mad. He still wouldn't go. But he had no other choice but to go because he passed out driving along the highway and end up in the hospital and they ran tests and all that and when they ran tests they found out he had cancer they found out he had cancer um and it, it was spreading it was spreading that's what was going on in his body that he kept saying he was feeling this, feeling that, and he was feeling tired all the time. He was aching. And... It hurts because I truly believe if he went earlier on, he could it could have been caught, and he could have you know, had medical attention, and then even do the holistic side of it um, and to counteract the problem, you know, counteract the, the cancer because there's many of people that um, have made it through cancer fee and everything. But when you don't go to the doctor to find out what's going on in your body, which God give us the doctor's, to find out these problems. And that's what made me so sad with him because he knew better. He was in the same church I was, so he knows the teaching, you know. And yes, we believe in herbs of the earth because that's what God gives us, but he also tells us that he gives us the doctors also to help with our health. You know, something's going, something's wrong, you know, they can see the problem, but also we have the herbs of the earth, which helps the earth, which is our bodies. We're, we're the earth, you know, but make a long story short, he, um, he started battling with it, but he didn't really want any treatment he tried to start treating himself holistically but you know his holistic doctor let him know his cancer has spread that you know it's probably best that he do both the holistic side and the treatment but he didn't do it want to do it right away but then he had no other choice again when he had no other choice but to do it that's when he does it because he started 
having so much pain that he couldn't take it. So he ended up in the hospital and started doing treatment. And I guess he went through it for about a year. Went through it for about a year, but then, but it had already spread it. It had already spread it. So it was basically, he was taking some treatment, but the spreading was already, you know, they might, you know, do okay on whatever it might be that they're treating, but it already spread it somewhere else. Then they got to go to that. Then they got to go to that. And it was just eating his body up. And he eventually left from the East Coast and went to the West Coast. Um, to be with his family. He's, uh, he has a mother and three sisters. Um, his father died years ago. But he has a mother and three sisters, and um, I'm glad he ended up going home there because he was able to spend the rest of his days there with them because, you know, they love him and they miss him. They hated the fact that he was way on the East Coast because they hardly got to see him. But he talked with them, but... They were very happy to see him. You know, I could see it in the pictures they were taking and then talking with him because him and I talk all the time. And his mother know me and, you know, she would talk to me. She would call me periodically when he was over here, you know, asking me how he's doing and stuff. But he waited for the last minute to tell them that he had cancer. They didn't know until he went home, you know. He he had told me, and, of course, he told I, um a pastor and a couple other ministers that he was pretty close to and then he told me and um he didn't tell anyone else then he went home he let his family know and then eventually when he was there he ended up having to go to the hospital and running back and forth to the hospital from where he just wasn't doing well and then he kind of let the church know, so we sent out prayers and everything for him, you know. He lasted a little while, but it just wasn't in God's will. It was time for him to go. And, um, you know, he passed about a week ago. He passed about a week ago, and it just broke my heart. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. Um, thank God for God. Thank God for holiness and just knowing what I know because I'm striving to serve God, living for God and his, his teachings. You know, I'm able to deal with the pain and the hurt and the understanding that it just wasn't in God's will because no one, no one lives upon this earth without the will of God. And everyone that dies, it's just meant for you. It's meant for you. It's not, not his will that you live at that time. And yes, it is, and God speaks on it, that some people die before that time. And that's because of the things that they do. But if God don't want you to die, you won't. So I just watched how the cancer just pretty much pretty much ate ate his body up, all his body weight, because he was tall. You know, he's tall, big guy, not fat, or, you know, big, but he was just tall, you know, and, you know, his whole body weight went, and it just, it just was so sad, and I, I didn't want to know him as that, you know, I just want to remember him as he's always been so happy going, and outgoing person beautiful person but we will video video each other even during his last days and you know that's how close we were he didn't mind me seeing him as he was because 
I was part of him, you know, and he's, um, you know, when I seen him and where I seen him, where his whole body weight just gone and like he was skin and bones and I just smiled. I had to keep a straight face because I didn't want to just break down and cry because if I did do that in front of him, he would say, Stop being so girly. <laughs> that was his favorite thing, you know, like stop being so, you don't don't be so girly. You tougher than that. Don't be girly. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, give me a break. I am a girl. <laughs> but I smiled and just tell him I was so happy to see him. I was just so happy to see him and, and miss him that hope hoping to visit him soon. But he knew I was having so much going on here. I was so busy. But the week that I had planned to go out to see him, it had snowed over on the West Coast. It They had storm, snowstorm. And um, even some of the church, because we have a church actually in Portland, Oregon. And one of the sisters there, Savannah, this is not a good week for you to come because we're having a snowstorm. We got about 10 inches right now. And, and even him and his, his family said, oh, Bonner, no, don't come this week if you're planning to come. Uh, we have having some bad snow. And um, I was like, okay, hopefully, Lord willing, I try to work out something, hopefully. I can get some tickets to come out real soon. But he passed. He didn't make it. And he didn't make it. Um, but that's okay. That's okay because I got to talk with him. I got to see him and I talked with him for a good while that day and that evening. The day before he passed, he passed the next day, early morning hours. We had so much planned. Maybe someday I'll tell you guys the things we had planned. I just, <sighs> I'm trying to hold it together. And it is already 27 minutes in and I hadn't planned on being this long. I was going to talk to you guys about it, but I hadn't planned on doing it in this video, but I did. So, mm, anyway. <laughs> Um, but I'm holding it together. I have my moments, but he was laid to rest today at Trav Noon in Portland, Oregon, which is 3 p.m. my time. So as you know, I've been praying throughout the day and looking at the time and around the time I knew that they were at the burial and thank God for one of the sisters in the church. She took some pictures of the grave site where they're always standing out there. And um, I thanked her. She said she's gonna send me a video in my Gmail account. And um, I thanked her so much. I should have been there. Well, I wanted to have been there. So I'm not gonna say I should have because things happen for a reason. So God may not seem fit for me to go because you never know. He could be protecting me from something. Um, because by the time they had finally picked a day um, to bury him because they had to wait because of the snow and everything. When they picked the day, I, I started looking for tickets right then and there because it was right there. It was right up on us. But the tickets was running a thousand something dollars guys these airlines is so ridiculous and i don't believe them one bit they're talking about book ahead of time you get a better price oh really because i didn't try that many a times before and the prices are still high you might be a few dollars cheaper but really these airlines 
is ridiculous. And I was so mad because it's just too much. I wouldn't even want to pay that. I can't afford it for one thing, thousand some dollars. Cause I was just going to go on that Thursday night and, um, the, uh, this past Thursday night. And then today would have been the barrier, spend some time with the family, spend some time with the church family. And then I was going to fly back early in the morning tomorrow, come back here home tomorrow and thousands of dollars. So I didn't make it. Um, I did talk with his mother and we plan on me coming later on this year around his birthday just to kind of commemorate and commemorate a memory of him and um, just do some things and do some things together um, or come on his one year anniversary that he's been gone. But eventually later on because you know like i said we have a church there I, I definitely can go church while i'm there so eventually down the road um lord willing i will make it there you know even though i didn't make it there for the barrier but that's okay i got to talk to him i you know we i got to be with him while he was alive and well we did things through you know i known him for a long time and we've had some great and wonderful times together that's what I want to remember him as and um he's gone you know he passed away his spirit has gone up with the Lord wherever the Lord has placed him at until he come back for his church but that shell he was no longer in it the shell was just to be put in the ground, so it's not like he was there, you know. And they, they laid that shell to rest today. Um, so, I'm asking God to give me peace, give me strength, take away the pain, and I'm dealing with it. Um, it's a different kind of feeling, guys. He was like my best friend, and I never had that before. And um, so it's a different kind of pain. But thank you guys for listening. I didn't mean to talk about it today, but I guess because it happened today, you know, they buried him, they buried him today. But I'm okay. I'm getting through it. I'm going to watch a movie, but I'm going to get ready to read you guys a couple of these chapters of this book because it's already 32 minutes in. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but this video is going to be long. So, you know, I know some, most everybody has short attention spans. So when they see a video longer than five minutes, they don't even want to see it, but that's okay. It's going to be longer than five minutes because <laughs> it's like 33 minutes so i might have a 50 minute video here so my faithful few i hope you enjoy the video but i'm going to start where i left off with little woman i left off on chapter four chapter five being neighborly okay I read a little bit of this, so I was on chapter seven, but then I went back because I said I ended up on chapter five with um, my family here. So I wanted to go back so I can finish reading because I want to read this book to you guys, but I read like a few chapters each time. But being neighborly, chapter five, little woman, what in the world are you going to do, Joe? asked Meg. Go out for some exercise, answered Joe, a mischievous twinkle in her eyes. Joe dug paths through the snow with great energy. The garden separated the March's house from that of Mr. Lawrence. On one side of the hedge was an old brown shabby house. On the other was a stately stone mansion. To Joe, it seemed an enchanted palace. She had long wanted to peek inside and to know the Lawrence boy. I think that boy is suffering 
for society and fun, she said to herself. Joe saw Mr. Lawrence drive off. She then went out to dig her way down to the hedge. It was all quiet. A curly black head leaning on a thin hand looked out of the upper window. She threw a snowball at him, and the big eyes brightened and the mouth began to smile. Joe nodded and laughed and flourished her broom. How do you do? Are you sick? Lori opened the window and croaked. Much better, thank you. I've had a cold. I'll come. If mother will let me, I'll go ask her. Joe marched into the house. Lori ran around to get ready, brushing his curly hair and trying to tidy up the room. A servant came to announce a young lady. All right, show her up. It's Miss Joe, said Lori. Joe appeared with a covered dish in one hand and Beth's three kittens in the other. Here I am, bag and baggage, she said. Mother sent her love. Meg wanted me to bring some of her blank mang, and Beth thought her cats would be comforting. I don't know if I said that word right. Blank mange or blanc mange. Blanc mange. I have to find out what that is. I'm curious. Okay. Let me get back to it. Meg wanted me to bring some of her blanc mange. And Beth thought her cats would be comforting. Is Beth the rosy one who stays at home a good deal and sometimes goes out with a little basket? Asked Lori. Yes, that's Beth. She's my girl and a regular one and a regular good one she is too. The pretty one is Meg and the curly haired one is Amy, I believe. I often hear you calling to one another. Well, I just wish you'd come over and see us. Wouldn't your grandpa let you? You see, grandpa lives among his books. Mr. Brooke my tutor doesn't stay here, you know, and I have no one to go out with me. Lori led Joe to the library, where she clapped her hands and pranced, as she always did when she was happy. It was lined with books, and there were pictures, statues, and cabinets full of coins and curiosities. The Dr. King and Lori went away. Joe was standing before a fine portrait of the old gentleman when the door opened again, and without turning, she said, I'm sure now that I shouldn't be afraid of him, for he's got kind eyes. Thank you, ma'am, said a gruff voice belonging to Mr. L Thank you, ma'am, said a gruff voice belonging to Mr. Lawrence. Joe blushed. She saw that the eyes under the bushy eyebrows were kind, with a sly twinkle in them. The gruff voice was gruffer, as the old gentleman said. So you are not afraid of me, eh? Not, not much, sir. What have you been doing to this boy of mine, eh? Was the next question, sharply put. Only trying to be neighborly, sir. And Joe told how her visit came about. You think he needs cheering up? I'm sorry. You think he needs cheering up? Yes, sir. He seems a little lonely and young, young folks would do him good, perhaps. The tea bell rang. Lori came back. The old gentleman did not say much as he drank his tea. But he watched the young people chatting away like old friends, and the change in his grandson did not escape him. There was color, light, and life in the boy's face now. She's right. The lad is lonely. I see what these little girls can do for him, thought Mr. Lawrence as he looked and listened. He liked Joe. Lloyd played the piano, and Joe listened, Mr. Lawrence said. 
His music isn't bad, but I hope he would do as well in more important things. Gordon, I hope you will come again. My respects to your mother. Good night, Dr. Joe. Back at home when all the afternoon's adventures had been told, the family wanted to go visiting. Mrs. March wanted to talk of her father with the old man who had not forgotten him. Meg longed to walk in the conservatory, Beth sighed for the grand piano, and Amy was eager to see the fine pictures and statues. Laurie's a nice boy, and I like him. We'll all be good to him because he hasn't got any mother. He may come over and see us. Mayn't he, Mommy? Joe said, very eager. Yes, Joe, your friend is very welcome. That's chapter five of The Little, Little Woman. The next chapter is chapter six. Beth finds the palace beautiful. I'm going to end there. I would have read about two or three chapters, but I end up chatting with you guys a little longer than I expected. And it is 41 minutes in. So I'm going to end it here, guys. And eventually, i check back in with you guys and chat a little more because it was some more things I wanted to talk about. But um, I took the time up with some other matters. So that's okay. But as always, guys, as I always say, never give up. Because God can deliver you from anything if it's his will. Just always trust in them. Believe in them. Grab a hold of them. Don't let them go. Because no matter what you're going through, he's the one that's going to bring you through it. He's going to give you comfort and peace no matter what it is. Whether it's in the good times or bad times or sad times or happy times. I still trust and believe in them. Even though I've been going through some rough patches, some tad, sad times, and some deaths but God is still God and he's still on the throne he will always will be and he is always 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 all powerful all knowing and the only one only one where life exists I love you guys stay strong